Hello, everyone. This is Justin Smythe from NextBigTrade.com. This is your weekly index review for March 22nd, 2024. Starting off with the S&P 500, we can see on the weekly chart, the S&P 500 did continue to make new highs this week, closed up over 2% for the week. But one of the main themes of the index review today is going to be looking at the volume in the market this week. And this was actually the lowest uh, volume that we've seen in the market this year, besides the holiday uh, trading weeks this year, where there was, you know, one day of trading that didn't occur due to stock market holidays. So if you look at the weekly volume here on the S and P 500, you can see how it was just underneath average weekly volume for the week. And then some of these holiday weeks are shown here, the first of the year, and then the President's Day week, which was here. So volume tapered off quite considerably this week after some big selling weeks last week or the last couple of weeks before this week. And, you know, one of the things that happened this week was the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision on Wednesday, which initially, you know, moved the markets higher after that announcement. And then on Friday, the market kind of came back in a little bit, but it was on lighter volume, as we'll dive into on some of these daily charts. Overall, the S&P 500 is still uh, extremely extended from its 30-week moving average. It's still around 10% above its 30-week moving average. We're still, you know, very late in the stock market rally, and there's not a lot of stage two breakout activity right now, which coincides with the lack of volume in this market. If we dive into the daily chart, uh, what happened last week and the week before is there was some high volume selling in the stock market, which caused two consecutive weeks to the downside. Then this week, the volume, again, was on the lower side, especially on Friday. If you look at that daily volume, this, this is one of the lowest volume days of the year on Friday. So in terms of strength of this move after the Federal Reserve announcement, it's really been a very tepid rally on weak volume so far, breaking out of this consolidation pattern. And if you look at some of these previous breakouts earlier in this overall rally, you know, volume was much larger when we exploded out of some of these basing patterns. So again, as we're getting perhaps later into this rally, we had some selling pressure a couple of weeks ago, and then we're breaking out on pretty light volume here. I think one thing to really look for next week is to see if there's any stocks that are breaking out on volume next week. If not, this could be a failed breakout type of situation where, you know, not a lot of volume push the market higher, you know, and the market tends to fake um, everyone out sometimes. And if, if we do roll over back below this resistance, I think that would be a negative sign for this overall market. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, the large cap tech did outperform this week up 3% for the week. And is now, you know, it's still just bouncing above this uh, moving average where it's still outperforming the S&P 500, but just slightly at this point, and it's actually been declining against the S&P 500 all year. So, you know, a good week for the large cap tech this week, but as we'll dive into the, the daily chart, you can see the weekly volume was on the low side as well. And then if we dive into the daily chart, you can really see how it, again, it tapered off on Friday, one of the lowest volume days of the year. You know, if you go back basically this entire year, draw a line around the, some of the lowest days, this was the lowest day by far this year. And again, we're trying to break out of this consolidation pattern, but we're not pushing higher on, on, heavier volume and we just came off some heavier selling volume just previously. So we'll see if this breakout can hold heading into next week. Looking at the NASDAQ again, lower volume this week, 
and just barely outperforming the S and P 500 again. So the technology overall continues to hang in there against the S and P 500, but it's it's been weakening. We drop down to the daily chart again. Nothing different here. We saw some big distribution volume coming in over the last couple of weeks. Then we break out this week on tepid volume. You know, overall this week, there wasn't even one trading day this week that had above average daily volume. Moving down to the small caps, small caps are actually underperforming the rest of the market this week. They have just been unable to outperform against the S&P 500 during this entire stock market rally, really coming out of the October lows. I know a lot of people are predicting that small caps are about to take off and break out of this basing pattern, but volume continues to not really align with what, you know, that, that kind of assumption is so far. Plus we're getting further and further into a longer term stock market rally that might need a periodic correction. So, you know, overall small caps are not displaying the type of power behind them that would, you know, really follow through on this breakout. And there's not a lot of individual stocks that are helping, you know, the small caps break out higher either. And the small cap growth, again, volume tapered off again this week, and this index out underperformed the S&P 500 as well. Dropping down to the VIX, the VIX obviously was set up for breakout last week with the market weakening, but then the market rally this week, the VIX gets battered back down. Fails to break out once again. The VIX has been a widow maker this year in terms of failed breakouts. It's It's been nothing but failed breakouts all year. And we closed back below the 10 week moving average this week. So we'll see what the market does heading into next week. Again, the VIX could turn right around, especially if the market breaks down and finally see that breakout. And we'd probably see some heavy volume coming into inverse ETFs once again. So as of now, the trend is higher, but again, watch these indices next week and make sure they can you know, follow through higher and they don't break below recent resistance. Finally, in terms of market breadth, the number of stocks above the 50 day moving average did increase this week. It remains overbought and you know, basically there's lots of stocks in longer term uptrends right now, uh, but the market really is out of position to really erupt higher here unless we get more powerful breakouts on volume. The best buying opportunities always occur at these oversold points where, you know, breath is oversold. We've come out of a major correction and then stocks start breaking out. We haven't seen one of these good buy points now, obviously for six months because we've been in a long-term stock market rally, but we are going to see one of these buy points once again in the future once we process a stock market correction. So at this point, we just continue to need to be patient. There's not a lot of opportunity in this market, but there will be a lot of opportunity at some point in the future after the next stock market correction. And then the, lastly, looking at the NASDAQ 100 percentage of stocks above the 50 day moving average, this continues to underperform against the S&P 500, just like the index itself. It has been underperforming all year and we'll see if, if this does break out to the upside above recent resistance, that would be bullish for the market. That would just continue to extend this rally and vice versa. Obviously, you know, this has been struggling all year. If it continues to roll over, then it's eventually going to bring the rest of the market down with it. So overall divergences like this, you know, can lead to breakdowns. We've got higher price, but we've got breath that continues to decline. And, you know, what eventually happens is once enough of this rollover takes place, the market has to roll over with it. So we'll see what happens going forward. But really the bottom line in this current market is that there was low volume this week and volume needs to ramp back up next week if you want to see this uptrend continue.